brings me nicely on to the topic of Gary Neville and my kind of decision overall as a fan of the game to just categorically say that I'm not going to engage with his content anymore when it comes to United or I'm just not going to listen to his opinion when it comes to United because he's been pretty annoying I feel like in terms of everything that's been going on with Oli and the kind of you know he's reign at the moment and the possibilities of us winning the title and Tuchel being hired for Chelsea and all these things happening right all these te tectonic plates kind of spinning around and moving a bit by bit all over the league you know the takeover at Newcastle Leicester obviously doing bits you know people are teams and teams and clubs across the country are basically getting to the point where as long as they have good players they'll be able to kind of upset a lot of the bigger teams maybe sometimes sneakily win an FA Cup here and there and maybe sometimes sneakily sneak in being able to sneak sneak into the top four some of the more unlikely candidates in the league right because you've seen what we've seen with Brentford and whatnot and we've obviously seen this onus on clubs getting their structure right being able to implement you know being able to hire the right football directors and whatnot to go there and kind of scout players get players involved um, bringing through a youth team all this sort of good stuff that's basically lending itself and basically impacting the fortunes of the first team or the club overall and it feels like for whatever reason our ex-pros at United have got their head in the sand or they've spent way too much time under the kind of glow of Sir Alex Ferguson and his ability to just win stuff in spite of our ownership that they've somehow got their blinders on and believe that as long as Oli just gets better players he will suddenly be able to challenge for stuff and I just don't think that's fair and I just don't think that's kind of realistic considering what's going on in the league and in football in general and I think that all Gary Neville in general has kind of annoyed me because he's been very kind of resistant resistant to kind of call out the coaching at any point, especially when there's been, you know, back to back poor performances. Most of the players on the pitch are playing badly, which is usually an indication of poor leadership, maybe poor communication, maybe poor tactics, maybe, you know, poor implementation poor implementation of play, whatever it may be. If more than 10 players or more than eight players, you know, starting to have a bad game, it's definitely something you have to kind of look at the coaching stuff at. And there's never mention of the coaching stuff. It's always about players. It's always about their attitude, always about transfers, always about this. It's never, ever the fault of the coaching stuff. And it's just been utterly annoying. And I think for most people, you can understand that, okay, he's their, he's their mate, he's their friend. But you just want him to come out and say, hey, look, I'm not going to criticize him because I know him. And that's it. And I'm just going to look for other things. That would be cool. But he's never said that. And only now when it's started to get really hot and it feels like the pressure's finally on, has he now come out and said, you know, he's not going to say anything about Oli because he's his mate, which again has been feared me because it then goes to show that these guys care more about their personal relationships and their abilities to kind of keep that door open at the club in order to kind of maybe get a job further down the line than they do about the actual club's fortunes. They're really quite selfish in that regard. And unfortunately, these guys also set the narrative in the media. So if they start Start talking about players and signing dms and we need more fullbacks and all this bullshit then fans will get it in their heads that we just need more players to kind of make this team tick how many more we've already signed a ton we've already spent quite a bit of money on the players we've signed already how many more do we need just to be competitive and again no one's saying about win the title just to be competitive because we haven't competed for a title in a long time we might finish second you know the other season whatnot but it wasn't very it wasn't a second to finish you know to in order to challenge for the title just a second as in the second of the bad bunch in that league in that moment for my opinion but this was the final straw for me with what Gary Neville had to say about United fans kind of criticising him for not, you know, basically calling out Oli. And he essentially said, I'm not going to say nothing bad about him because he's my friend. And for me, that's where I kind of, I, I bow out when it comes to the Gary Neville kind of commentary when it comes to Man United. I just think he's an absolute plonker, to be honest. But he should be under massive pressure with the squad that's been assembled and the fact he's been in the job now two and a half, nearly three years. 100%, 100%, but the club are not going to change him. And the club are going to stick with him to the end of the season. My view would be, is not. I agree with James, it's not the right time to discuss it now. I've got Manchester United fans on my social media time and all the time saying, Gary, he's your mate, you won't call him out. No, I won't. No, I won't. I won't call Steve Keane out or Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. I'm not going to come on this show 11 years later and ask for the manager to be sacked. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. He's a club legend. He's my teammate. See how he's clever with the double speak there. He, me he mentions all those other managers, but then he mentions it in a way to say... He's not going to call out any manager for them to get their job sacked. But then now he's saying he's his teammate, he's his mate and all this malarkey. And you also have to imagine, I think during his tenure, if I'm not mistaken, again, maybe it's somewhere between three and six managers that hit the club that he owns with other class of 92 members. Um, he sacked, I think, six managers at Salford City. 
since he took over the club and they've kind of owned it. Six managers have been sacked. And again, don't think he doesn't know that these managers get sacked. It's something that definitely gets voted and definitely gets spoken about within the club's ownership. So he's overseen six sackings of managers at his level, yet he doesn't think any other manager in the Premier League should get fired. It's like, what? I actually like him a lot. And Manchester United have failed with two previous managers who've been world-class. I think they persist to the end of the season. I disagree. So they failed with managers who've been world-class. So they should stick with somebody who clearly isn't world-class just because he's a nice guy and he's my mate. Like, you, it just boggles the mind. Like I said, these guys are either, oddly enough, again, some people have kind of theorised that they're maybe getting paid by the Glazers. I don't think that's true. I just think they're... They like the, you know, the reception they receive when they go to the club. They love being able to take, being taken to the press box. Sorry, the press box, the VIP lounge or whatnot. Having a free slap up meal, maybe getting a chauffeured card there, you know, from the station. I mean, from the stadium or to, you know, to the stadium, whatnot, right? They love all that stuff and they don't want to jeopardize it. So they'd rather bury their head in the sand and speak in, you know, all this kind of double speak then just say the truth because as much as they like to say they love the club they don't they love what the club can do for them they love what they can get out of the club but when it comes to talking about club things and the rational point of view they want and again let's let's be for real if this is ten Hag, if this is zidane if this is anybody else that they don't know specifically and they're going and he's going through the same bad form that ollie's going through the tone will be completely different he won't criticize maybe but the tone will be very very different with Jamie on the fact that if he does win the Europa League in the FA Cup and they finish in the top four, I would say that's still building a successful team. You go up against three of the best teams. In that is insane. If United crash out of the Champions League but win the Europa League and finish in the top four, that's success. Considering the players that we've signed and considering what he's meant to be built on from the last season, that is not a success. If anything, especially having lost the Europa League final to a Villarreal team who aren't the best, you would imagine trying to make sure you get to the last 16 of Champions League would actually be a success and then trying to finish the season with a trophy and of course in the top four as close as you can to the title chapter to the eventual title winners. That would be a success. But again, Oli and his coaching staff decided that the Carabao Cup wasn't important, so they fluffed that away. An easy trophy is good now gone. Now they have to compete with one of the most, or two of the most difficult trophies to win, especially in the FA Cup in terms of length, and especially in terms of the Champions League in terms of quality of teams you're facing. So you made the job doubly hard for yourself. And in the league, you've got Liverpool and Chelsea and Man City absolutely doing bits, which is pro pretty much looking like it's going to be very difficult for United to finish ahead of those guys. Maybe we'll finish just about fourth, I think, because the rest of the teams aren't that great. But to, to basically say the Europa League is as good is as good as maybe fit you know maybe winning the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup is legitimately insane um especially considering where we're at the moment but hey again protecting his friendships above actually thinking about what best for the club in the world in Chelsea Typical. City and, uh, and Liverpool by the way with three of the best managers so Manchester United changing the manager now doesn't prove anything to me in terms of what could happen I still think they could struggle against those three teams but the pressure is building Dave the and let's say this, right? He's saying United can still struggle because Oli's having to compete with three of the best managers in the league or maybe in Europe. That's true. And we've all said that. We've all said Oli's not the best manager and people kept arguing, right? And the Oli ins would argue against you and say, what, what makes you think that? Give them good players. They'd argue. Cool. But then he's still the same guy who told us a couple of maybe months ago or a few months ago during a transfer window when he was looking at Harry Kane was going to leave Tottenham. What's happened with that? You know, Danny Levy put his foot down. He's not going anywhere. He also told us that if United signed Harry Kane, it would give us a chance to win the league. We don't sign Harry Kane. We sign Cristiano Ronaldo, who's referred or kind of commonly seen as maybe one of the top five best players in the world. Maybe top two with Messi and him. I wouldn't say top two, but let's say in terms of notoriety, ability, success, numbers, all that stuff. He's, he's in the top five, right? I wouldn't say Harry Kane's in the top five, especially in terms of honours. We signed one of the best players in the world and he doesn't say that's give us a chance to win the league. So Harry Kane could win us to a league. Christian Adder can't. But now Oli isn't good enough for the league. So what does that mean then? Does that mean if you get Harry Kane, you can still win the league or challenge even with a manager that's not as good as Klopp and Tuchel and Pep? 100% is building. It should do. Cavani, Greenwood, Rashford, Martial, Van der Beek, Pogba, Fernandez. What a collection of players. Sancho, they've got to now start to perform and he's got to get them to perform. 
Again, that's basically my conclusion. I'm not listening to Gary Neville again. He talks absolute frass. He gets on my nerves. And essentially, he's only looking out for himself and not the best interest of the club. So, yeah, he can get absolute, you know, he, he can jump out of a window for all I care, to be honest. He can jump out of a window. 